Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, uh, just take a second out of your day, uh, like the video, subscribe, come aboard, uh, and join us on this uh, road to never-ending learning, right? Never-ending learning and never-ending uh, goal. There is no pot of gold at the end of the day. It's just one day uh, after the next, and a good day is being uh, a day in business. So uh, quick update today. I have to take my son uh, to basketball training. Just want to give you guys kind of a little bit you know, of insight what I'm thinking of, uh, especially into the next trading day. Uh, pretty, you know, pretty bland day today in the technology world. Uh, after a big four or five day run, uh, we're going through a little bit of a holding pattern, a little bit of distribution. Uh, if you look at a bunch of names, you'll see some are green, some are red. That's very healthy. That's a very healthy organic market. Uh, today, the, the QQQs tested back the five-day moving average and held. Uh, where it gets a little bit dicey, and this is kind of where we always uh, talk about you know, understanding uh, the lines in the sand, it gets a little dicey if the Qs start giving back uh, 435 on the close. That, that's when you give yourself a little, bit of a, uh, a little bit more of a safety net, especially if you are uh, trading a book. But right now, uh, it, it looks really, you know, just fine, just fine. It's in a holding pattern right now, and we'll go through individual names We'll kind of see on individual stocks right now. Uh, if you look at the semiconductors, which which have been really fueling the fire uh, to this market, although uh, the last three candles closes were lower than the opens, this is what what a red candle is. They're still holding firm. They're still holding firm, and because Nvidia is holding firm, uh, you know AMD is holding firm. Uh, again, the big number here, and this is this is a number you should really uh, write down and have a, a reminder is going to be this two hundred six level until. Uh, they breached the 206 level. Again, you, this is deemed uh, as a potential rest. Uh, S&P kind of mirrored today uh, the NASDAQ 100, just like the Qs back-tested, touched, kissed the five-day moving average and bounced. The spies did exactly the same way. And the Russell, right? The speculation money in the market, uh, it's not like the others. This is actually playing catch-up. And the big number here for a really big, aggressive speculation money potential inflow on a lot of smaller mid cap names is this 20550 level right and that's going to be a, that's the highs from december the 27th so that's kind of a snapshot of the etf uh, of the etf world uh, if you go again uh, trade by trade if you go name by name let's go through them really quickly tesla again no man's land absolutely no man's land uh, just when you think the stock is going to break down right it holds the bottom range and rallies. Just when it was about to rally today, it gave pretty much everything back, and now it's back in the middle of the range. Again, it, it, it's a little bit annoying. It's still very tradable today. Uh, today, for example, we had at the open, we didn't buy this thing on strength. I waited for a pullback into rising support. We caught a nice $3 move on this thing, but it's very aggravating. I, I, I've, you know, I speak to a lot of traders, and they're like, well, this is not the same Tesla. Of course it's not the same Tesla. We're below supply. It's very, very common for a stock to be below daily supply to act erratic. That's the whole point. Uh, it, you know, I don't care the next move on Tesla, whether it's going to be to the upside, to the downside, but hell, and I think I can speak for every single Tesla trade out there, just damage, just pick a direction and go already. Uh, Apple, right? Apple was on the verge today of losing the bottom of the range that we've been talking about for a couple of days. And then all of a sudden, a PR comes out from Apple and the PR says, we are going to... I guess unwind our EV dream of having an automobile. Okay. And, you know, and that wasn't the big kind of fuel to the fire. The fuel to the fire was, well, I think we're going to concentrate now on AI, obviously. And if you see, if you see what happened to Apple right around, you know, right around two o'clock today, just went out of its mind. The problem with Apple is the chart sucks, right? Just like the way. On uh, just like the way on Tesla, it's below the 50-day moving average. The best we can hope for is maybe a day two run. You know, today it got rejected at the 150-day SMA. Maybe tomorrow it reclaims back the SMA and gives us a you know a, a second-day run to maybe 85, 86. Again, not a huge, uh, not a huge type of uh, potential in the stock. But again, just like Tesla, that's what happens 
when stocks are sitting underneath uh, daily supply. Uh, Amazon, you know, kind of mirrored today the NASDAQ 100. Uh, again, not really, you know, just giving that second big move on earnings, but today it went down to the five day moving average, held, bounced. We'll see if it could hold uh, the five day tomorrow. Uh, Google, you know, Google again uh, today gapped up into supply. I know some of you guys took the rejection. What came in about a dollar forty, held this Bollinger Band, and and then rallied back on this kind of AI uh, buzzword on Apple. Uh, Meta again, one of these conundrums. Or well, why hasn't Meta, uh, you know, handled that second day run today? At least it reclaimed back yesterday's channel. It'll be curious to see tomorrow if it could confirm today's channel and start moving higher. I ironically, last week we saw some 500 calls, uh, short-term expiration, not so much. Again, so it's just very, very odd that these mega cap beta names are just not giving that second, third, fourth push uh, after earnings. Uh, a name like Square or Block, right? They changed their name to Block, had a big earnings run, came back in for a couple of days, put in a higher low, a higher low and a higher high from yesterday. Keep an eye on this thing tomorrow and the next day. If it could start reclaiming the last two days channel, maybe goes back to, to earnings highs. Uh, something, you know, definitely, definitely to keep an eye on. Uh, AMD, again, uh, AMD, you know, held the five day just like everything else. A little bit of a no man's land here. It's going to need a little bit of work here to reclaim uh, the previous uh, day's channel, but something definitely, uh, definitely to watch. And last but not least is NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, NVIDIA, potato, potato, whatever you want to call it. This is the stock we're talking about. The reason why I say sometimes NVIDIA, that's the call letters, N-V-D-A, right? I'm not, I think I'm not stupid. I might be a little dumb. I'm not stupid though. So sometimes I pronounce it NVIDIA. Sometimes I pronounce it NVIDIA, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. It's still the same stock. Again, big, big move on earnings. Uh, basically just rested the last couple of days. The, the key with NVIDIA, right, is... If it starts taking out the previous day's channel, then it's going to finally wake up. Right now, it's just still going through this distribution mode of its latest earnings release. Where it gets a little dicey is if it starts losing the five and the 10 day moving average, that obviously will split, will, will shift our attention to the short side. Because again, if they do lose the shortest sentiment of five day support or 10 day support, then yes, we're going to have uh, another leg down. I want to tell you guys a really funny story. So a buddy of mine today, a buddy of mine today that we, none of us, none of us trade SMCI. So a buddy of mine today shorted SMCI off the 824 breakdown, right? The stock goes down 10 points. You guys saw it. Here, you guys are trading it today. The stock goes down points, 10 points in a matter of, I don't know, eight seconds, right? Eight seconds. And the stock ribs back, comes back in, ribs back, comes back in. The guy winds up making a literally like a dollar fifty on this whole move, and he texts me. He goes, "I'm never trading this piece of shit again." Enough said. Again, guys, not everything is for everybody. Again, <laughs> some of us are not getting old, uh, not getting younger. And stocks like this with a ten point range, with a hundred share, hundred share uh, liquidity, with two dollar spreads, is just not for us. But hey, you know what? The longer it consolidates and consolidates, and you know if it starts reclaiming back today's channel. Maybe it gets a little bit more organized. Maybe it gets a little bit more slower in its approach for potential uh, this deceleration to the downside. We'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But again, guys, again, you don't need to trade what everybody else trades. Uh, feel comfortable in your own skin uh, what you are uh, comfortable in doing. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Uh, again, we were watching for Apple. The news came out. Obviously didn't confirm. We were watching for ARM. Never came in. Uh, Google, again, took out this 3740, but after the rejection of the 3840, uh, came all the way down to 37 and held. Uh, Qualcomm, nice little move on Qualcomm, 158 needs to build, nothing crazy. Uh, it took out 158, went to like 59 and change, and this is the highest close in this whole formation. So, again, it's not a sexy story. Uh, Tesla, we were watching for this 205, 205, 40s highs. That's literally where it stopped today, uh, but we got this thing on a dip today in the 201, 40s. Nice pop back. Uh, again, very disappointing the way it's trading. Uh, SMCI, this is exactly what we talked about. 824 line in the sand. It went down $10 literally in about eight seconds. Okay. And nine seconds later, it, it came right back up. But again, got to watch this thing for the downside, especially if there is more uh, distribution in the entire market. Uh, this was definitely the one today. Uh, Carvana, 
76.33 needs to build. Again, this is the earnings highs play. Uh, you have a catalyst. You have everything good in the world. So it took out the catalyst of the earnings high of 76.33, went all the way up to uh, almost 83 and a half. Huge move. Congratulations for you guys uh, who caught that as well. Uh, and Google, right? This is basically good. congratulations to all you guys who rejected it at the 60 minutes supply. You got a dollar fade. It was actually a dollar 40 fade. But here is the initial uh, 60 minutes supply uh, where it got uh, rejected. And that was right over, no, where was it? Right over here. It was off the 60 minutes supply. It got rejected. Uh, it came in about, actually, excuse me, right here at 3830s, came in uh, about a dollar 40 or so. So again, you know, a decent day, nothing crazy, nothing. Uh, dramatic. We want to see how more uh, if these mega cap stocks continue to uh, to rest. Uh, you know, is it possibly have a, what, one more orderly kind of patient day tomorrow? Yeah, but again, there's always uh, something to do. Let me give you guys uh, some ideas for tomorrow. Uh, look at Disney. Uh, Disney looks interesting. It stopped right at the 10-day moving average, got rejected. If it could reclaim back the 10-day moving average, maybe Disney wakes up. Um, square, like I talked about a couple of minutes ago, it just needs to reclaim the last two days of, uh, of the upper channel. I think there's a shot. It starts waking up to the upside, uh, meta, you know, like we talk about all the time, it looks like it's ready, right? Every single time we talk about meta's ready, it goes up two, three points and then kind of dies. Is tomorrow different? We'll see. You know, we're going to watch, uh, tomorrow's, uh, today's channel for tomorrow, uh, and NVIDIA, you know, let's see if tomorrow... Uh, it wakes up. I'm guessing NVIDIA is going to wake up somewhere around Wednesday, Thursday, if it's going to wake up at all. But again, so far, really good uh, distribution on this last uh, run on earnings. So that's it, everybody. That's it. Trying to cut this a little bit short today. I got to take my son uh, to basketball training tomorrow. Again, new day. Come in nice and calm. You don't need to trade every day. You don't need to be stressed about anything. You don't need to guess. You don't need to the fight with total strangers on social media, where you think a stock is going to go. Guys, it's it's simple. It's simple, simple, simple. And what I mean by that is a stock could only go higher if it takes out the previous day's supply. A stock could only go lower if it takes out the previous day's support. That's it. Nothing in between. Everything else is conversation. Everything else is noise. And everything else is banter. So you remove the banter. You remove the noise. All of a sudden, you start thinking clearer. Guys, God bless. And I will see you on the field tomorrow. Take care.